Hi, I'm Denise with ThisIsMyEverybody.com. February is a Storathon Readathon where we focus on reading wonderful historical fiction novels. And today I'm going to be sharing my Storathon recommendations with you. So get your pen and paper ready. We're going back in time to learn more about the time we currently live in. So, are you ready to go? Welcome to This Is My Everybody, bringing books to life in your life and home. Today we're chatting about the Storthon Readathon. The Storthon is hosted by the charming Amanda of the Curly Reader, and this year her co-host is the lovely Angie of Science Mama. And both of these gals are super enthusiastic readers of historical fiction. In putting together my historical fiction reading list, I really enjoyed watching their videos on their suggested titles for historical fiction book recommendations in figuring out what book should I read in completing my historathon bingo board? Oh, but wait a minute. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say the bingo board? No? Oh my goodness. Well, let me get you up to speed on how all of this works. The dates are February the 1st to the 28th, 2021, with a theme of reading historical fiction books. And to expand our reading experience, our host, Amanda and Angie, have created a bingo board with nine prompts to guide our book selections as we read during the month. And once you've bingoed with your completed reads, then congratulations, you have crushed your Historathon challenge. And it doesn't matter how you bingo, it's up to you. Or even how many times you choose to bingo. You can go diagonally, you could go straight up and down, or you could complete the whole board. Whatever you decide, just go for it. And that's where I come in. Here are my historical fiction novels recommended for each of the Historathon prompts. And for each block on the board, I'm going to be recommending two books. One book that I've already read and highly recommend or has been recommended to me from a trusted source. And the other one, a book that I've not read yet, but it's on my Historathon TBR for this month. So let's get started. Beginning with block number one, a book set in a place you have visited. In order for me to recommend books that would be helpful to you to finish this block, I had to pick something that I thought would be a popular destination that many of you have already been. And so I selected New York City. And my recommended book for this is The Masterpiece by Fiona Davis. This book was a 2018 release. It comes in at around 368 pages. The subgenre, it's a mystery, and the time period has two timelines, one in the 1920s, one in the 1970s, and it focuses on New York's Grand Central Terminal, where an art school was held in the upper floors of the terminal at one time. Had no idea, but check it out. And on my Historathon TBR for this category is The Engineer's Wife by Tracy Anderson Wood. This one it was a 2020 release. It comes in at 352 pages. It's biographical based on an actual true story. The timeline is approximately the Gilded Age and focuses on the building of the Brooklyn Bridge, where the wife of the engineer who was overseeing that project plays a very big role in ensuring that that project gets done. So I am definitely going to be all in and can't wait to start reading The Engineer's Wife by Tracy Anderson Wood. And moving to the right on the board to blot number two, a multi-generational book. My recommended book for this category is The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is a 2013 release and it comes in at a hefty 528 pages, but don't be afraid. It reads like butter. <laughs> It has a subgenre of a science theme. Uh, the time period is set in the 1800s. And as far as where we're going, you are going to go all over the world. London, Peru, Philadelphia, Tahiti, Amsterdam. Just buckle your seatbelts. You're on for a great journey. And it focuses on a family, and in particular, the young daughter who's growing up and wants to become a botanical scientist. This book is fabulous. It's on my top 10 all-time favorite books to read list. So do yourself a favor. Check it out. The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert. 
And my Historathon TBR for this category is Florence Adler Swims Forever by Rachel Beanland. This was a 2020 release and comes in at 320 pages. This is biographical based on a true story and it's set in pre-World War II times 1934 in Atlantic City and focuses on a family who lives in this small apartment, all of them, over their family bakery. <laughs> Sounds great. I am definitely going to be all in and can't wait to start reading Florence Adler Swims Forever by Rachel Beanland. Then to block number three is a book about a war that is not World War II. Uh, my recommended book in this category is Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. This was a 2010 release. It comes in at around 448 pages. The sub-theme of this is definitely family. Uh, there's two timelines, one in the 1940s, one in the year 2000, I believe. And it definitely is all about mother-daughter, sister-sister relationships in which they're all connected only by this thread of this Russian fairy tale that their mom would tell tell them. They don't understand the fairy tale and they definitely do not understand their mom. So definitely check it out. Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. And my Historathon TBR for this category is The Great Alone, also by Kristen Hanna. This one was a 2018 release and comes in at around 448 pages. It is the time period. It's going to be in the 1970s, which means we're looking at the effects of the Vietnam War. It's set in Alaska again and also focuses on a family who moves to Alaska to the wilderness with no experience to live off the grid. I've heard wonderful things about this book and I am definitely all in and can't wait to start reading The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. Then moving to row two, block number four is a book by a diverse author. And the recommended book here is going to be Hum, If You Don't Know the Words by Bianca Murray. I have not read this book yet, but uh, it was recommended to me by both Amanda of The Curly Reader and Brie of Call Me After Coffee. So it must be great. Uh, and it was a 2017 release coming in at around 432 pages. Uh, the subgenre is a coming of age book and the time period is the 1970s set in South Africa and explores racism and the creation of family in an apartheid era South Africa. Sounds wonderful. So check it out. Hum If You Don't Know the Words by Bianca Murray. And my Historathon TBR pick for this is Shadow Play by Joseph O'Connor, who is an Irish author. This one came out in 2020, comes in at around 400 pages, and it's gothic fiction set in the Victorian time period and set in England. I'm super excited about this one because it brings together the real-life characters of Henry Irvin, who was a celebrated London actor at the time, as well as Bram Stoker, the author of Dracula, and Ellen Terry, who was a very famous leading lady in the theater at that time, and Jack the Ripper. Oh my goodness! And anything that is set in the theater has just got my name written all over it. So I'm definitely going to be all in and can't wait to start reading Shadow Play by Joseph O'Connor. Then moving to the center square, which is the group read for the entire Historathon, is The Yellow Bird Sings by Jennifer Rosner. This was a 2020 release and comes in at around 304 pages. It is biographical, uh, based upon true story, and it's set in World War II in Poland and focuses on a Jewish mother and her young child who are in hiding from the Nazi soldiers. And the child is a musical prodigy and is really having a tough time being still and quiet during this time. So the mother invents and tells her this amazing story of an enchanted garden. It just sounds wonderful. And I look forward to reading with all of you in this Dorothon, The Yellow Bird Sings by Jennifer Rosner. And then on to block number six is an historical fiction subgenre. For this category, I'm recommending The Last Garden in England by Julia Kelly. It is an historical romance. This book was just released in 2021 in January and comes in at around 368 pages. There's three timelines, 1907, 1944, and present day. And it focuses on five women who are a part of the creation of or the maintenance 
maintaining of or the restoration of these amazing estate gardens at the Highbury House in England. It's absolutely wonderful. Check it out. The Last Garden in England by Julia Kelly. And my Historathon TBR pick for this is The Diviners by Libba Bray. This one was recommended to me by Amanda, the Curly Reader, and I cannot wait to start this one. It's Historical Fantasy, released in 2012. It comes in at a hefty 800 pages, but Amanda assures me it, it just flies through the story, so I can't wait to start reading. She says it's got a supernatural historical mystery involved in this, and uh, also it's book one of the Diviner series, so if you end up liking it, there's more to come. So I'm definitely going to be all in and can't wait to start reading The Diviners by Libba Bray. Then going down to row number three with block number seven, a book with no people on the cover. My recommended book for this one is The Nightingale, again by Kristen Hanna. Both myself and Angie of Science Mama just love this book, so we're highly recommending it. It was released in 2015 and comes in at around 440 pages. Once again, family is the theme here, and it is set in World War II in France and focuses on the women's war from the perspective of two sisters who have very different experiences. So check it out, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. And my historical TBR pick for this is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. This one was a 2018 release and comes in at around 480 pages. It is also gothic fiction. The time period is Victorian time and set in England. It combines folklore and science, magic and myth to solve and mystery through the power of storytelling. I am super excited to read this book. I'm also going to be participating in the Once Upon a River read along this month, which starts February the 15th. You can learn more about that. My video is right up here and I'll include a link in my description below. So I am all in and can't wait to start reading Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. And moving on to block number eight, a book set during winter. I have two wonderful books for this one. My recommended book is The Snow Child by Eowyn Ivy. This book was released in 2012. Uh, it comes in at around 389 pages, and the subgenre is magical realism. The time period is in the 1920s. It's set, again, in Alaska. I love that. And it focuses on this inexperienced couple who are homesteading in Alaska again for the first time. Uh, they're getting a little bit up in years and they've always longed to have a child. This book was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize and is on my top 10 all-time favorite books to read list. It's fabulous. I highly recommend it. Check it out. The Snow Child by Eowyn Ivy. And my Astorathon TBR pick for this is To the Bright Edge of the World, again, by Eowyn Ivy. And I'm so grateful to you, Angie of Science Mama, for bringing this one back into my mind. I've always wanted to read her second book. So thank you. This was a 2016 release. It comes in at around 432 pages. It's an adventure story as well. The time period is around 1885, again, of course, set in Alaska, and it focuses Focuses on an expedition to the uncharted Alaskan Territory Wilderness in winter. Oh my god, I can't wait to read this one. So I am definitely going to be all in and can't wait to start reading To the Bright Edge of the World by Eowyn Ivy. And to our last block, number nine, a book with a person's name in the title. The recommended book is going to be I Was Anastasia by Ariel Lahan. And this one is going to be recommended to us by Angie of Science Mama. Again, thank you so much, Angie. This one was a 2018 release and comes in at around 352 pages. It is biographical based upon a true story. The timeline is right 1918, 1920, and set in both Russia and Germany and focuses on a woman, her name was Anna Anderson, who spent 50 years of her life claiming to be the surviving Anastasia Romanoff, the only survivor of the Romanoff royal family massacre during the Russian Revolution. I've always been fascinated by this story. I am looking forward to checking it out as well. I Was Anastasia by Ariel Lahan. 
And my Astorathon TBR pick for this one is The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. This one was a 2020 release. Uh, it comes in at around 320 pages. It is biographical, inspired by, or based upon a true story. And it is set in the time period of post-World War II in England and focuses on a group of individuals who are committed to preserving Jane Austen's home and legacy. It just sounds wonderful. I'm definitely going to be all in and can't wait to start reading The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. You can download your own copy of the Storathon Bingo Board at either The Curly Reader or Science Mama. And Amanda and Angie have also set up a Goodreads group specifically for the Historathon, where the group reads book discussion of the Yellowbird Sings will be going on as we all read together. Plus, they're going to be offering an online live discussion of the group read at the end of February. I'll be sure to provide links in my description below of both Amanda's and Angie's channels where you'll find their Historathon announcement videos and even more videos on their historical fiction novels recommendations and how you can connect to the Goodreads group as well. You'll also see links below to get a free gift from me, my notes and quotes printable card set, which will definitely come in handy as you document your notes and quotes as you read your favorite historical fiction novels, plus a special link on how you can enter my free monthly book giveaways. Oh yeah, you need to definitely get in on that. <laughs> What's next? Stay tuned for my upcoming videos on even more February group reads, including another readathon focused on historical fiction books. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And here are two more videos right here that you might like, all to bring a book to life in your life and home. Thank you so much for watching. You are my everybody.